Okay, so I'm going to go out with my trusted practica BX20 again. I'll tell you another story about this another time about me using this as a professional camera. And you're going to say, no, you couldn't have done it. No, honestly, but I did. And that's it. But that's another story I'll tell you. <clears throat> okay, so what we've got is we've got some Fomapan 100. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to do half a roll and half a roll. So the first half, I'll expose the film as 400 and then develop it and then just cut that out from the back of the camera and then develop it as 400 speed. And then I'm gonna push it again further to 800 and you'll see it at 800 ISO. Now I'm probably gonna split this into two different videos rather than one video because I'm gonna go out and about and show you where I'm photographing as well. So the first one will be about pushing to 400. Now, the reason I'm not doing 200, I don't really see the point. It's not going to be make that much of a difference. Plus, um, I can only get the developing times for Rosenol that are a decent length developing times at 400 and 800 at 25, uh, 1 to 25 dilution. So that's why I'll be doing that rather than uh, doing a 200 as well. It doesn't, it, it, the dilution will be completely different. I want the dilution for them to be identical. So I'm going to probably take about five or six photographs of the same thing now, some today and some tomorrow, um, unless um, there's a drastic difference with the light. If there's a drastic difference with the light, then I won't do it. I'll make sure I get the same sort of light on the, on the days. I do also do want to do, use two different cameras and two different films. I can't really afford that at the moment so because things are not good, like for everybody. Anyway, so now we're just going to go over and we're going to take some photographs with this in the lovely Practica BX20. Yeah. What I did forget to tell you was that I was going to take one shot in the studio from exactly the same distance. So the, the actual camera is going to be tripoded, the focus is going to be the same, and then we're going to do one at 400 and one at 800 of, say, like one of my cameras. That's what I forgot to say when I started this video, but that's what will happen. That will be like the default uh, for you to see. Um, but I'm working out shots at the moment as I go out. And I've just done, I'll just turn the camera around. Hold on. And obviously I use the statues again this time. But I'm actually standing at particular points. Now the two girls that are on the uh, left hand side, I did a shot of them. And I did it from the first step and then the second step slightly closer. To try it so when I come back and I do the same shots again they'll be in the same point and it's also it's it's overcast so it's, it's almost like a so, uh, like a, lo, a light soft uh, soft box on so um, I'm hopefully I should get, be able to get the um, same sort of conditions later on so I took my first shot from where I'm standing now and if I make a step forward and go to here and I'm in exactly the same position I was for the last shot so when I do them on 800 the actual distance should be the same and um, we should be able to get some sort of similarities to look in, in what they're going to look like. Difference of contrast and grain, which should be quite good. The shots don't necessarily have to be that exciting. Um, so I thought I'd take a shot of the bridge like it is here. And I know where I'm standing now. There's actually a point I can come back to and exactly stand in the same position and get the same sort of shot when I expose at 800. So I'll do one now. And again, it's quite overcast. Um, and I'm hoping that the weather can, tomorrow will be the same. I know it's not like a this is like a scientific test or anything like that, but it's still nice to see um, it out use the films outside rather than just have like 20 or 30 shots of the same thing. So I like to get out and about when I do this sort of thing rather than it being just in the studio. I also took a shot of these mushrooms. Now I don't think I'll use this in the test, but or are they mushrooms? What are they? I mean, they are, I think they're mushrooms, but um, yeah, I don't think they're particularly edible though. Let me know in the comments if you know. I think this is the last shot I've taken of the set. I've taken another one of this. It's, it's basically, um, it's called a flow gauging station. So I'm guessing it gauges the flow of the river. Um, and I took a shot of this warning sign here and I took a shot of the side of the building from, I've come back to where I was. And it's so I can keep the same distance for each shot. So I took a shot from here. But because it's a 50 mm lens, it's only the building that you get to see rather than the actual surrounding like you can. Obviously, this is a wide angle lens. I may take one more shot um, to conclude with, but I've given different lights and textures and contrasts and different stuff. So I think I've got enough to demonstrate the difference between this push to 400 and push to 800. So this would be really like the end of the, uh, the 400 lot. And it's just about to start raining. So I think I'll get home and have a nice coffee. 
So this is the last shot I've got with the uh, foamer pan at 400. And I've just basically set a light up here. I won't show you for the back there. And I've set the um, old boxes on the table. And it actually fills the entire screen of the camera. It's a 50 mil lens. So what I'll do now is I'll take this last shot. I'll cut the film out the back in the dark room, develop the film that I've done. And then what I'll do is I'll reload the film. I won't move the actual tripod or the light. And I'll do the same shot at 800, so that way I get a consistent between the, between the two. Plus I've got uh, whites in there, I've got multiple different colours, so we look at all the different types of shades as well, which was really, really cool. Uh, it'll give us a good idea of what the film performs like at 400 and 800. So, quite looking forward to this. So, I'm in the, in the little dark room, and it's my actually where my washing machine is, and this is how I set up for loading up a film so I have the center piece already in place I have the two spirals because obviously it's a large tank I have to have both of them in because that can actually move if you don't put the other one on top of it and if you're only using 300 mils of liquid it will um, it will move and you then won't cover the actual film itself and so and the camera's here ready to unload but I'll pick that up I'll have that in my hands anyway I already have the prep button pressed so I can basically cut the film and just literally just pull it out and then what I do is I'll close that back up and then get that ready to take the shot at 800 or so but this is the tiny little setup I've got I have to do it quite late because obviously it's in my kitchen next to my kitchen and the light gets in and stuff through the window in the daytime I need to get a changing bag but you know things cost money so anyway here we go okay so I'm just about ready to develop I've got my road knob and I've got my water at the right temperature and that's the fix that's already diluted in there I tend to put them in um, old containers rather than buy containers and the film is ready to go in there so all I do is mix it up and then get it developed and fixed and next thing you'll know is you'll see the actual final results or see the results I got at 400 ISO. So let's take a look at the results of the Foma pan push process to 400. I'll start with the default photograph that I took and um, one of the things I did notice straight away the blacks aren't very deep at all. Now um, having said that the across one looks a lot darker than the P30 and the Cairo. It's actually not that bad. I mean, when you zoom in, you can really, really see the grain. See how heavy it is and soft uh, the actual shots are. And I think that's only going to get worse when I do the 800 ISO. Um, but that's the, that's the default. And I, um, Do I like it? Well, for a film that's £4, it's, I think it's really quite good. Um, I also don't know if the actual practical lens is that sh sharper lens. Should I have gone for my Olympus and done it all on my Olympus? I don't know, but I, I wanted to use the Practica. Let's look at the other photographs. Now, these are the ones I was talking about at the start. These are the ones of the girls, uh, the statue of the girls. And you can see this is the further away one. This is the I'm going to go in order now anyway. So this is the furthest one away. But you can zoom in, you can see the grain. You can see how big the grain, the grain is. But I'm zoomed in quite a long way. And, um, yeah, the contrast is quite nice. Um, there's the blacks, there's not really many dark blacks at all in this. I mean, obviously, you've got these poles at the back, but they're not really, really dark. And it, it seems to be that the, the film doesn't really do like really, really deep blacks. I mean, the drain pipe there looks looks quite dark, okay. And this is the closer version of the faces. I was standing that a step closer. I'm going to take these photographs with me on my mobile phone so I can actually look to make sure I can get a closer resemblance to the originals I, I could um, but they're still very nice they're nice black and white photographs they really are I mean it's you know I mean would you have have this and push it rather than buy a 400 speed the 400 speed is pretty much the same price so it's maybe not worth doing I don't know and um, this is the one on the bridge you've seen this in the video before um, contrast is I mean it's, it's quite muddy and um, it was overcast but it's quite dull in, cons in comparison to what it was like when I took the shot so I'm a little bit disappointed with this one I think it's the, the fact that it was um, it's the way the film reacted to the type of situation I was in um, and it wasn't as, as like as high contrast to light as the as the other shots and the, my favourite shot of all, for some reason, is this one of these mushrooms. 
when I was looking at the negatives earlier on, I'm thinking that actually looks really quite nice. And it's got a lovely tonal range on this, going right through to the dark blacks and the different, um, you know, the twigs, the different uh, shades and stuff, and then the mushrooms itself. I'm really, really pleased with that. And now down to the final two shots of the weir. Um, nothing really major to report. You can see it again. If I zoom in, you can see weir head, weir ahead. Um, yeah, the, it's actually not bad at all. I mean, you know, would I use it? Would I push it to four hundred again? Would I do it? Yeah, of course I would. I think it's a it's a good film to play with. And the last shot, again, this is the where I said about the warning sign. Um, and I was expecting these to come out deep black, and they haven't. So I think the when you push process it from a hundred to four, I think you'd lose um, that that a uh, uh, contrast. So it'll be interesting to see how we get on with the eight hundred. Anyway, I'll be back in the next video with the rest of the shots. Thanks.